Okay, so uh, we are going to be discussing uh, the concept essay, some general comments. We had uh, breakout room uh, sessions uh, discussing basically the challenges and the problems that you had uh, in writing the concept uh, essay. So, <clears throat> Uh, let me begin with the general comments. Uh, do you see my screen? Yes. You do? Do you still see it? Yes, concept essay. Concept essay, okay. <clears throat> so, uh, the concept essay, uh, definitely it has uh, uh, frequent use uh, in the academic community and the uh, professional community uh, in um, basically community at large uh, in the workplace, uh, anywhere in different disciplines. Uh, primarily one could say that uh, we are uh, uh, producers and consumers of these uh, concepts. Uh, given the uh, pervasiveness of concepts, uh, we decided to limit ourselves to uh, cultural concepts, uh, but even cultural concepts, uh, uh, despite the fact they are specific to specific cultures, uh, are probably invisible and are too many to be able to grasp. Uh, anything that is cultural is less inclined to be uh, observable, uh, consciously uh, at least, because our culture is uh, an ensemble of uh, indirect and unconscious really notions. Uh, I recall that in one of the rooms, uh, there was an interesting discussion about the cultural notion behind ghosts and uh, sleep uh, paralysis uh, that the Jasmines basically were discussing. So we uh, try to limit ourselves to cultural basically uh, concepts. Uh, and I would say that some of you had done a superb job in terms of selecting a focus topic and appealing to your readers' interests. Um, and uh, some of you, more than some, um, had developed a more sophisticated and adequate development of the topic. And uh, some of you had made uh, effective use of the source uh, material. Uh, we had a variety of topics, including spanking, uh, the Day of the Dead. Uh, there are definitely areas of improvements uh, based on these uh, questions that I have formulated. And you could ask yourself these questions. Is the essay focused with a clear thesis? Uh, the thesis in this case would be the definition, the origin, the genesis of the term and the ways in which basically the term has evolved or has changed and your particular basically take or definition of the concept that you have picked. Uh, and in this case, uh, what your point is uh, really, what is it that you are trying to get across? Uh, for instance, uh, uh, in highlighting your thesis or your particular definition. Uh, have you become an expert on the concept? Uh, that is why you were asked to use uh, three academic sources to become a semi-expert uh, when it comes to the concept, be it spanking, which is done for what? Uh, cultural purposes, for disciplining, uh, or the Day of the Dead, uh, you know, why is it celebrated? Uh, it has significantly basically changed over time. Is it the celebration of life more than basically just honoring uh, the dead? Uh, so what is, uh, you know, your, uh, what was your 
earlier assumption and how your assumption was replaced by uh, knowledge, stocks of knowledge about the term and its evolution. Uh, have you provided too little or too much information about the concept? We had uh, other topics such as uh, Spanglish, uh, such as machismo uh, or toxic masculinity. Uh, is the essay easy to follow? And what type of organization have you, uh, for instance, used in organizing uh, the definitions? Uh, uh, have you given re your readers a sense of how the essay will be planned? Organization is always a conscious, basically, uh, way of walking your readers through your text. Does the information need to be restructured to make it more clear and effective? And sometimes it is really a revision of organization requires just restructuring uh, the essay. Perhaps it is the beginning that you need to reframe or the ending or just uh, the placement of the uh, paragraphs. Uh, have you provided adequate and clear definitions of the terms? What strategies have you used uh, in terms of definition strategies? Have you used synonyms, antonyms? Uh, I recall that, for instance, Marina in defining jihad had used uh, quite a few of these, uh, classification, negation, extended examples, stipulations. Uh, have you provided background information on the topic? And have you defined a concept or written a different kind of essay? This is important. You know, this is a concept essay, not, for instance, an argument. Uh, uh, it is not taking a position, for instance. It is not an essay about cause and effect. Uh, <clears throat> it is defining, for instance, uh, personality types, uh, hopefully in the context of uh, cultures and how cultures could have really different notions of what these personality types are, uh, the product of basically scientific inquiry or modern psychology. Uh, we had uh, enticing topics such as uh, Thai cuisine, which makes me hungry. Uh, and uh, an area that I found basically uh, that merits uh, uh, revision would be the use of sources. Have you used sources? How many and for what purpose? Uh, in revising, it is important to identify, list your sources and explain how each source explains the concept. Uh, how do the sources provide a better understanding of the concept? Do the citations so a superficial or incomplete search for information? How can you make better use of the sources? Uh, are the sources relevant? Does the essay use too much or too little coded material? Uh, and it is important to use paraphrasing, summarizing, and coding as uh, textual, basically, strategies rather than one. It is not a good idea to use too many quotations. So you have to combine these different strategies. Highlight each and explain your use of uh, each strategy. So these are really practical guidelines for revision purposes. Are the sources well integrated into your text? And have you cited your sources both in text and in the list of references following MLA? Uh, I suggest highlighting basically your sources and checking your examples against MLA both in text and also the works cited page. Every time you mention a source, it is important that you also have it in the list of the works cited. Uh, sometimes you may have inadequate, insufficient uh, citations. Sometimes you may forget how to close basically a quotation. You may forget how to indicate the page number, as a matter of fact. 
uh, if you have exact quotation or even a summary of something. Uh, you may forget to identify the author, the date of the publication of the work. Um, all these are crucial and critical, basically, uh, questions. Now, uh, definitely, uh, in addition to uh, the content and the organization and the formatting of the essay, it is important to proofread and edit your work. I always suggest that you print a hard copy of your essay uh, for proofreading and editing. Uh, you could read it aloud, you could read it to someone else, you could basically <clears throat> read it from bottom up, uh, uh, you could look for typical errors that have been found in your essays, such as, for instance, agreement of subject and verb, or uh, missing plural endings, or, uh, uh, for instance, run-on sentences, or fragments, or uh, dangling modifiers, uh, you just name it. Uh, this class does not address uh, surface basically errors because different students really are at different levels of grammatical competency, <clears throat> but uh, it is important that you uh, take the time to proofread and edit basically your work and uh, using a writing center, not for proofreading and editing purposes. They may draw your attention to some of the problems that you may have in terms of uh, the content and the organization and perhaps uh, your style of writing. Uh, punctuation, mechanics, uh, uh, the type of register, for instance, that you have used. You know, the way we talk, we use kind of uh, this is a kind of, uh, but in formal writing, of course, we write it as kind of. Uh, so uh, using basically uh, spell check or grammar check would be uh, crucial, but only after you have developed a keen understanding of how grammar and uh, spelling works. Uh, you know, you could write something which is correct orthographically when it comes to spelling. Uh, that is how a computer program identifies it. But in reality, it may be a totally different, basically, uh, uh, issue. Uh, I'll show you a couple of examples in a minute. <clears throat> so the revision process for uh, this essay or any essay would go through content. First, you read it for the content, your thesis, your definition, the support material, the evidence, the examples, the definition strategies that you have used to, uh, uh, to ground and substantiate basically your definition. Then you look at the organization of the essay in terms of transitions, beginning, ending, um, the formatting um, uh, of, of the text, and Finally, you look at the language. So, hey, um, Mr. I yes. wanted to ask, I really tried on the explaining a mm -hmm. concept essay. Can I just resubmit it to my, my final concept essay or is it different? Yeah, it, uh, uh, that's a good question, uh, um, uh, Jasmine. You could resubmit it under the concept essay. I will simply just read it and change the grade. That, that uh, is the only way to go. Otherwise, I have to create three different, basically, uh, assignments. Draft one, draft two, final draft. So I have to resubmit the explaining a concept, or is it fine? Uh, as far as I remember, uh, the only issue that I had with that essay was uh, perhaps uh, sources academic sources and uh -huh. identifying those sources. And that's what I... Uh, oh, I already so identified on it. I only okay. paraphrased one. Okay. But I don't know about the sightings. Like, what do you mean? That to make it MLA or... Yeah, uh, we are using MLA for the purpose of this class. 
But is it wrong? Uh, the, I, would, the I would accept APA, you know, if you belong to, let's say, social sciences, because in social sciences, they use APA. APA stands for American Psychological Association. Uh, MLA is Modern Language Association. Is um, quinceañera like considered a socialized or modern? Which one? It's, called, it's considered a modern, right, quinceañeras? Um, modern, um, modern in what sense? Concept, you mean? Yes. I mean, you know, it's an old concept, but definitely it is being used uh to recontextualize uh gender identity in modern times that that's how i see it um see so I, I do need work on my um my essay right yeah, I think, you know, uh, if I'm not mistaken, the type of, the title of your essay is Coming of Age. Is yes, not? yes. So Coming of Age is really, you know, it is a stage uh, at a young girl's uh, 17, is that the age? 15. Uh, 15, that a girl basically uh, enters uh, a different stage in life or basically approaches womanhood. And so the whole ceremony is uh, meant to uh, identify, uh, cement, and uh, reproduce basically that gender identity. And I thought, you know, that was the kind of definition that you provide. Yes. So I, I think that's a good one. So you think I should ask, add more work into the gender identification? Uh, I really don't know. I mean, uh, we, we could uh, read the essay uh, and uh, uh, look at it uh, again to see if you need to add anything. But sure, keep can mind we read, read the essay if you want. Okay, well, okay, we'll see. Um, it might be a good idea because you read the first draft as far as I remember. Yes. So they could see the revision. Okay, so um, uh, any questions? So any kind of revision uh, to summarize uh, would go through the content, organization, and uh, language. So uh, anyway, you are not able to see my screen now. So I was going to ask you uh, to close your eyes. When I ask you to close your eyes, I'll be back. I'm looking for something. Okay. Are you ready? Do you see my screen? Yes. Could someone read this to me? Grammar, the difference between knowing your shit and knowing your sh you are shit. Does that make a difference? Yes, there's a difference in grammar. Okay, but obviously, you know, your grammar check is not going to catch that. 
Uh, which which if medium? you're reading it well. Uh, of course, yeah, but uh, many students have problem with uh, the apostrophe, for instance. Um, which one has more positive meaning despite the negative connotation of the word? Which one has positive meaning? The knowing your shit, the first. The first one, obviously, first, right. Yeah. So you may be surprised to know that there is, as a matter of fact, uh, an association, and I was talking about apostrophe. There is an association which is called apostrophe uh, association, a protection society. Do you see that? Do you see my screen? Apostrophe Protection Society? Yeah. There it is. So it was started in 2001 by John Richards with the specific aim of code preserving the correct use of this currently much abused punctuation mark in all forms of text written in the English language. So uh, they are collecting uh, examples and uh, definitely they are in the business of protecting the language. They even have a song. <laughs> out in Birmingham, apostrophes must go. From street signs in that UK town, they're bond now, don't you know? The city council says it has much better things to do. But I say save our language from those bureaucratic fools. It's apostrophe, apostasy, you change our English round. Shakespeare's rolling over in his grave. They took a hammer to our grammar and broke our language down. It's apostrophe, apostasy, what names? Apostrophes are crucial to the meaning of our words. To take them from where they belong is patently absurd. The spineless types who voted this sure have missed the point. And the pun is much... Do you see that? So they even have a song. And if you want examples, look here. The word is out in Birmingham, apostrophes must go. So anyway, sometimes basically an apostrophe uh, makes a great difference in meaning. Uh, a comma makes a great difference in meaning. Would you say that a comma could make a difference in meaning? Yes, I agree. The right punctuation. Can you think of an example? Okay. Do you see my screen? Yes. Do you see my screen? Yes. Yeah, could someone read this? Which which one? Let's let's, let's eat grandpa. Grandma. Okay, you don't like grandma, I suppose. Yeah, go ahead. Let's eat gran grandma. The first one is let's eat grandma. Mm -hmm. And the second one is let's eat grandma. Yeah. Have you ever eaten your grandma? <laughs> yeah, so definitely this is a classic basically example 
but when you write, obviously, uh, you may not basically pay attention to these uh, surface uh, grammatical uh, or punctuation issues, and therefore, uh, you might be making uh, errors, <clears throat> typical errors that could only be corrected through a rigorous proofreading and editing. Uh, I don't know how many of you really go through the process of proofreading and editing your work, uh, because I do recall writing that you really need to pay closer attention to proofreading uh, and editing. How many of you uh, print your essay and do uh, your proofreading and editing uh, on a hard copy of the essay. I'm asking myself, or I'm asking my grandmother. N neither, I'm asking you. Um, yes, um, mm -hmm. maybe not. Mm -hmm. Necessarily, um, I'm not gonna lie. I have been um, printed mm -hmm. out my essay, but I'm printed out my essays that I've submitted. But I tried it. But it is it is good because of the prior English that I took. Um, mm -hmm. You have to. It, it always helps out better than just in the computer. Yeah, exactly. And you will see basically the difference because. Once you make those corrections on the hard copy, you introduce them uh, into basically your essay. Now, I don't know if, if you are familiar with track changes, are you? Are you familiar with track changes? No, I'm not. Okay, so let me just open a Word document. Uh, Does anyone want to volunteer opening their essay? Or I should just open one essay myself. How about the concept essay? If I want to share my concept essay? Yeah, go ahead. Why don't you do that? Okay. We could, yeah, use basically a short paragraph as an example. Um, I can't really share my screen. Um, let me make it possible for you to do so. Okay, try now. You should be able to share now. Okay, okay um, my concept essay is this? Yes. I mean, you could read your essay, uh, uh, and then at the end, we could look at the ways in which basically we could use track changes. Happen? Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, I put a title of Coming of Age, mm -hmm. and I put Imagine the scenario of a girl wearing a puffy dress in a room filled with extravagance decorations and her to her left of the party there are her family and friends these individuals come to see her and celebrate her special 15th birthday the elegant dress that she is wearing is made up of tulle and it's noticed right away by guests by the guests it makes her look exactly like a princess when she is approaching the the 
the on bottom of the stairway. This tradition is known as a quinceañera, and it is one of the most practiced ritual stories of the Latino culture. The quinceañera has many symbols in you becoming a woman from its items. The gifts you, re you receive present the loyalty and commitment to God for you and for your family and you. The tiara represents how you are a princess in the eyes of God and the doll symbolizing you leaving behind your childhood and becoming an adult. The importance of this practice is that it represents the quinceañera. Oh. Um, do I take this off, mister? Yeah. Probably messed up. Um, the quinceañera is important because it, sim it symbolizes a woman's coming of age, similar to a wedding. It is passed on from... Oh, this isn't my final. I'm sorry, mister. This isn't my final. This is just my drafts. Okay. Sorry. That's why, I, that's why it's imperfect. All right, let me look for my final. I know. Yeah, to have the final and the concept. That's why. I see. Okay. Okay. I'm going to start all over. Imagine the scenario of a girl wearing a puffy dress in a food room filled with extravagance, a decoration, and to the left of the party, there are her family and friends. These individuals have come to see her and celebrate her special 15th birthday, 15th party. The elegant dress that she is wearing is made up of tulle and is noticed right away by the guest, which makes her look exactly like a princess when she is approaching the on bottom of the stairway. This tradition is known as the quinceañera, and it is one of the most practiced rituals towards the Latino culture. The quinceañera, the quinceañera has many symbols. In you becoming a woman, from its items, the gifts you receive represent loyalty and commitment to God. For you and your family, the tiara represents how you are a princess in the eyes of God, and the doll symbolizing you leaving behind your childhood and becoming an adult. The importance of the... That's weird. I still have it. Okay, let me just take it off. I thought I didn't have it. It's weird. The quinceañera is important because it symbolizes a woman's coming of age, similar to a wedding. It is passed on from heritage in the Latino culture. It is traditionally showing the young girls, young ladies, purity and readiness for marriage. The quinceañera is an entrance for a young woman's way into adulthood. The quinceañera is important because the event isn't just a passage, but a memorable event for the young lady. As everyone who she invites had an impact in her life, as everyone watches her leave everything about her childhood behind in one event. The quinceañera is important because it is in the Latino culture considered the last day in which a woman is a child and welcomes her into the responsibilities of childhood by displaying and symbolizing the girl's journey towards adulthood. I just take this out and one more yeah. one important symbolism of the quinceañera is that it represents the passage of a young girl's way into adulthood one major example of how it represents adulthood for a young girl is in such places as cuba the girl is seen wearing a long dress and a long skirted gown this tradition displays purity as long as the long dress is adorned with flowers that display a graceful and youthful appearance. Other areas also practice a special occasion such as Disneyland or Las Vegas. The quinceañera is a big party similar, similar to a ball. However, it focuses on the adult aspect since it includes traits such as prestige and professionalism. Usually the tradition occurs when the girls reaches the age of 15 
and during this occasion, she is the main center of attention. The girl is seen displaying and wearing mature cosmetics, such as makeup on her eyebrows or wearing high heels. This symbolizes that she is ready for marriage because in the Latino culture, the legal age for marriage is 15. The girl can now talk and dance with young men as this specific perk is important because it allows the girl to independently express herself. In these traditions, as many have seen, the young girl, the young lady having the quinceanera is gifted with expensive gifts, which do include perfume sets, sets of makeup, high heels, and money or gift cards to go shopping. These gifts are for the girl to get accustomed to the moment after a quinceanera ends. In Latino cult traditions, they do not agree with the idea that a quinceanera is a big part of coming of age. The parents see the significance of the big party. It symbolizes who they are and where they come from. It is the day where princess dressed girl is accompanied by more princesses and young men dressed in a black in a suit with a black tie. The quinceanera is a very significant role in the Latina culture that in the coming of age in the coming of age of ritual for a young lady. Another major importance of the quinceanera is the practices since many of the traditions are represented to be ritualized and often misinterpreted. The girl is known as the quinceanera wears a tiara. Her flat shoes are then changed by her father into high heels and she receives her last doll. This represents the readiness of her ability to bear children. She is then escorted by damas and chambalanes, which represent her 14 years. Since the families are mostly of Catholic origins, the party is preceded by the blessing of a Catholic priest. This tradition was brought along with the growing economic power and with the influence of a traditionalist society. Companies sell expensive quinceanera trip cruises or quinceanera resort packages, along with included perks such as video and photo shoots. This strict tradition displays the ritual practice of displaying wealth according to Julia Alvarez in her book, Once Upon a Quinceanera. As she states, I also spoke with dozens of girls and their families who observed that the quinceanera has become an even, even bigger deal stateside than it had ever been home. In page five of the book, Alvarez is interpreting how many parents had now decided to spend $20,000 on a quinceanera for only one night. It shows that these parents are willing not to not see the importance of the quinceanera, but rather focus on their display of wealth. Alvarez displays how the ritualized practice is often misinterpreted because many people are focusing on the wealth aspects of the party, ignoring the true main traditions. The quinceanera may have not may have have been as ritualized as may have been, not have been as ritualized as it once was due to this notion. Instead, it should be focused on the traditions of the girl's maturity. Planning and quinceanera requires the girl to decide the theme of their quinceanera, including the guest and with an average budget of $5,000. The important message is that the party is trying to convey that while the quinceanera is an important event, it should not be worth spending over thousands of dollars for a single night long, unless the family has a privileged background. The party is a passage to a woman's way from childhood to adulthood, and when she welcomes her responsibilities in her life and how she is seen in the eyes of her religion and her society. 
I imagined my quinceanera very special. Me standing on top of the stairway with a very puffy pink dress with tulle with glittery laces and arriving down the stairs having couples lining up for a way for me to pass while fo photographers are taking pictures of me to publish in it, it on the next magazine titled The Most Beautiful Quinceanera Ever Created. The one night where all my fantasies could come true, where I sit and I get crowned with an extremely beautiful tiara made of silver gold and thousands of real diamonds in which when the ceremony is over, would be stored in my bedroom as a memorial display. Standing there in Disneyland Castle and holding in my arms while sitting down a beautiful porcelain doll as my last doll. Then have have very expensive gorgeous heels on and when it came time to dance the last waltz, have a dance like Belle when she danced with the beast. Thousands of people watching and for the food, have only the finest chefs cooking and serving the food. And have a very d big delicious cake made from only Paris best shaped pastry chefs, looking like dripping diamonds. Having pretty deep rose bouquets on every table and the theme color pink. A princess's fantasy in which it would be created in one night. In conclusion, gets a quinceanera is a very special day for a young lady in the Latino culture as it displays the purity of the young girl's maturity towards womanhood. The importance of this practice displays the religious aspects of the Latino culture and symbolizes the blessing of her, her future life as a woman. It is influenced by the early journeys of her childhood life through their transition of becoming a young woman and with the support of her close relatives. And I just have yeah. my work cited. Is there something wrong with my work citing, mister? Okay. Um, yeah, it could be, it should be actually on a separate page. Oh, it should? Yes. Um, so any comments about Jasmine's essay? Uh, you had seen the first draft. This is the revised draft. Come on, earn your participation points. Jane. The other Jasmine. I guess, Professor. Uh, I thought mm -hmm. you explained the concept of a quinceanera. Um, it was it was good in order um, as far as being detailed about what it means um, to go, um, you know, to go to a quinceanera. Obviously, it's a party. Uh, but, you know, just like the real meaning behind like having, you know, um, the the seven guys and the seven girls meaning, you know, her 14 mm -hmm. years of age and um, as far as like the gifts that she's gifted. Um, so I thought it was very, um, I thought that she, she it was very informative um, as far as going into detail and depth of it not just being a regular, um, cultural uh, party that usually I mean that's how society sometimes looks at, or looks at it. Right, Claudio has the same opinion. Uh, he thinks that uh, the essay is uh, well uh, detailed and well substantiated. Uh, any other comments, Michelle? I had well details. It was um, understandable. So do you think the term itself was well-defined? Yes, it was. So Marina, um, since you had used quite a few of uh, strategies, defining strategies, what strategies do you think 
uh, Jasmine had used in defining uh, her concept. Yes, she, well, I, I think she changed. She make a, a lot of changes. Mm -hmm. Like she, she put conclusion at the end mm -hmm. and she talk about herself, mm -hmm. how she celebrate. Mm -hmm. And she, she make a changes in the source to the citation. Right. So she begins basically with, uh, anecdotes, uh, she uses narratives, uh, she uses basically different types of uh, <clears throat> definitions, extended basically examples, uh, symbolisms uh, that are used uh, to represent basically this uh, transition in the uh, uh, tradition itself. So she applies uh, several uh, <clears throat> strategies. <clears throat> and as you mentioned, definitely uh, she uses uh, sources uh, as well uh, to ground and expand her definition. <clears throat> and you mentioned that uh, organizationally it is more coherent and uh, uh, it is uh, definitely there is a better flow to the uh, continuity of the essay. So how about uh, areas, possible areas of improvement? If Jasmine wanted to improve this more. Anyone? Uh, <clears throat> Claudio says maybe double check uh, the uh, proofreading of the essay. I totally agree because uh, there are some uh, <clears throat> gaps, some grammatical flaws, uh, occasional errors. Uh, I would also recommend basically using as the title, the word, the concept itself. What is the concept? Is it coming of age? Yes. No, that is the definition, but you have to use the original language. So what, what is coming of age is your definition. Can see an error? Yeah, that should be the title. Uh, okay. if, you want to use coming of age uh, in the title, you could still use it, but you would say, uh, you would use the concept and say uh, the coming of age in, for instance, uh, in Latin culture or something to that effect, or Latina culture. Now, another thing which I noticed and uh, probably escaped your attention was the citation. Now, there was only one source cited uh, as far as I remember, and it was Alvarez. Could you go to that segment? Yes, of course. That's right. Let's see. Here. Here. So if we want to use basically MLA, uh, this is uh, what Alvarez found, right? This is what yes. Alvarez has said. So what you need to do is to put a parenthesis there and write Alvarez. Over here? Yeah, instead of but I already put Alvarez right here. Okay, so according to Alvarez, leave that 
and then take out page five. Yeah, I had the same question. In, in parentheses, just write five. Five? Parentheses, not in. No in. Oh, okay. Just parentheses, and you write the number five. I like this? Yeah. Parentheses, that's not parentheses. No. What's parentheses? <laughs> Is this? It's going to be in the number nine or the number zero of your laptop. Oh, okay, got it. Those are, yes. oh, oh, those are quotation marks. And then you put a period. Period? Okay. And then you take you out it? of the book. You take out of the book. Got it. You see that now it says, according to Alvarez, well, first of all, you have a lot of redundancies. According to uh, Julia Alvarez in her book, do you need in her book? No. Alvarez in? Uh, okay, uh, so I put in. According to Alvarez in, yeah. Um, once upon a time, uh, I also spoke with, so this, uh, the grammar doesn't really follow. Julia Alvarez in Once Upon, right? A quinceanera uh, cites, is, is she talking herself or she interviewed people? She interviewed people. So that definitely should be Julia Alvarez and once upon uh, uh, a time, yeah. whatever sites. Sites, okay. C I T E S. Got it. Sites, a young girl, for instance. A young girl. If that, that is what it is. A young girl basically stating or saying, and then do you have the quotation? Got it. So I'm just the same. You see that now it reads well. Mm -hmm. oh, okay, you just have to go with the flow. Uh, definitely. Otherwise, you know, the grammar, this is called the grammar of citation. This Got is it. a smooth integration of the source. It and is it's, not it's, just enough to acknowledge the source, but to acknowledge it correctly. Um, is there anything else? If you are impatient, no. Uh, so this is what I, if you could copy uh, one paragraph and take it to Word. Just copy one paragraph? Yeah, and take it to Word. Got it. O open your Word, copy it into Word. Copy. Mm -hmm. Got it. Um, I don't think I have Word. You don't? I think I do. Yeah, I do. Blank paper. Uh, this is Google document. We could use that, but I'd rather use just regular word. Got it. Paste options. Okay, so... I actually don't have it. Oh, you don't? <laughs> no. I don't. Okay, then uh, let me open my word. Uh, you could just close this. Okay, so here is basically my word, and uh, let me see if I can open. Uh, this essay is that this is word. Okay. <clears throat> Okay, so let me share my screen with you.
Do you see my screen? Yes. Yes. So, <clears throat> uh, what I want to show you is how to use track changes. So in Word, uh, you go to review. Do you see that? Yes. And you have to activate what is called track changes. Do you see that? Now it is on. Yes. Do you see it? Okay, so in track changes, when you activate track changes, growing up with then a Chinese culture, I learned and often expected the art of being polite, acknowledging of the social and environmental around that often called for the use of honorific and politeness. Do you see any problem with this sentence? It's not really going through with everything. Okay, so growing up within a Chinese culture, I learned and often expected the art of being polite. Acknowledge, so let's say that this part is not really uh, well formed. Acknowledge of the social and environmental around that often called for the use of honorific and politeness. So you could see that there is, you know, a problem here. <clears throat> um, so let me see if I can find out what the author is saying. <clears throat> Does anyone know? I think he meant acknowledgement of the social and environmental mm -hmm. uh, situation or uh, situation that often calls for the use of honorific. honorific but anyway, just pay attention to what I did. I, what did I do? <clears throat> when I make any changes, I deleted this, right? Do you see it? Do you see my deletion? Yes. Okay, so uh, social and environmental, for instance, uh, let's, for instance, manners or mannerism, right? I'm going to take that out. Now, <clears throat> Social and environmental mannerism often call for the use of honorific and politeness. Is that correct now? It's definitely more correct than what it was. Do you see the change? So mannerism was added uh, around that was also deleted. So this is what tr uh, track changes does. You could make changes at word level. You could change the entire sentence or parts of a sentence, or you could revise the entire basically paragraph. For instance, based on what we have learned, this essay is about honorifics in Chinese. I don't know what the word is. Maybe we will come across that. Do you think that's a good title? Uh, so I'm going to write a comment here. Change the title. Do you see that? So the author <clears throat> will look at this and will change basically the title. Bring honor to all of us. Maybe the importance of honor in Chinese culture. Some may find that the use of honorific significant in one's language becomes evidently crucial throughout life as the ability to recognize and effectively analyze certain social factors becomes necessary in order to better uh, position themselves in society and in some cases gain approval from others. So, <clears throat> 
How do you like that sentence? You can't even read it at one breath. Yeah. Okay. So what, what should we do? Clear it out. Yeah. So some may find the use of honorifics, honorifics. So that, for instance, S is missing. I could simply just take this out and write new, do you see new comment? Missing. S. What is this? Of course, this is plural. So some may find the use of honorific significant in one's culture. One refers to what? What does one refer to? Each other. Uh, it refers to, so I would say this is wrong reference. This refers to what? Some. Um. Right? So this should be what? Is some singular or plural? Singular. Some. Pl no plural. <laughs> oh, so sorry. it should be what? There. It should be there. So there is a problem with reference. The, it is called antecedent. Do you see that's how basically track changes basically works? Uh, the use of honorifics again in their language and then becomes evidently crucial throughout life. What becomes crucial? Why don't we just simply end this sentence? Because this really is uh, what we can call, uh, I go to new again. And I would call that uh, run on. It's run on sentences. We have to break them down into separate sentences. So, for instance, uh, honorifics uh, become evident or evidently crucial throughout life. They signify the ability to recognize and effectively analyze social factors. Social factors that become necessary in order to better position themselves in society and in some cases gain approval from others. So by breaking down the sentence, recombining them, uh, we could basically <clears throat> improve uh, the structure of this paragraph. So this is how track changes is used. Now, if you click on this, right, uh, <clears throat> you have accept. Do you see that? If you want to accept the change, you will accept the change. If you think uh, the editing is not correct, you reject it. As simple as that. Do you see that? Accept, reject. And there is a mechanism for accepting all the changes, or you could just accept the changes as you go through them one by one. So this is the main function of track changes. You have to activate it. And then if you want to write, for instance, a peer comment, you go to new comment, you click on it, on this. You could say great thesis or your thesis, for instance, needs improvement. Uh, now we didn't go down all the way to the end of this paragraph <clears throat> to find out what the term is. Um,
Yeah, apparently the Chinese word has not been used. But we could say, for instance, use the Chinese word in your title. Is this your thesis statement? So on and so forth. Uh, track changes is not limited to just making proofreading and editing. You could also look at, for instance, the transitions across paragraphs. You could look at the type of language that has been used. For instance, you could say, oh, secondly, yeah, that's, that's a good transition. Uh, why? Because it comes after the first paragraph. And as you could see, th these are good examples, how they use more formal, Nin, uh, and more general, Ni, excuse my Chinese pronunciation, and the honorable form, which is Gui. So there are, these are good examples. So track changes could be used for proofreading and editing for the revision of the content and also for uh, formatting of your paper as well in terms of setting the margin, so on and so forth. And something that I'm going to show you later on, it can show you what kind of reference style basically you should be using. You see that? If you go to references and then go to citations, do you see that? What does that say? APA. And what does that say? MLA. MLA. And you could basically, as you are working on your paper, you could uh, build in mm, to your paper these formatting requirements as well. So anyway, uh, <clears throat> uh, that is uh, basically what I wanted to uh, Mister, show you. So do I need any more work on my... We talked about basically possible revision. It's uh, uh, polishing your use of the sources. Um, what do you mean by sources? Like, what do you mean polishing? Like what we did. We just went over one example. Oh, so I need to work on that? Yes. Uh, and I noticed that maybe in a couple of places you have used sources, but you have not acknowledged the source. So oh. it is important to acknowledge all the sources that you have used. Oh, uh, uh, I don't think I use any other sources. Uh, read it again. Uh, you know, follow the general guidelines that are provided in the uh, concept essay. Uh, apply that. I think you have approached really an A at this point with some minor uh, revisions that you're going to be making. Okay, so unfortunately, we did not have time for me to go over uh, the research paper. What I want you to do, however, and I want you to post this uh, before our next meeting, identify a problem, a community-related problem, or a work-related or a school-related problem. Uh, a problem that merits attention, that needs to be fixed, that needs to be addressed, maybe needs to be readdressed, a problem that remains, a problem that is very serious. And uh, that would be the topic of your research, basically, paper. You are going to be using five academic sources for that uh, particular, basically, essay. Uh, it is important that you think about and you start the exploratory stage of looking for uh, your sources. Question, Professor. So is there a class this, on Wednesday? Is there a class on Wednesday since it's Veterans Day? I, I, yeah, I will try to address it on Wednesday because, you know, we were carried away. Okay. But if you go to... Proposing a solution, annotated bibliography. This is the prompt itself, which you can find it in your book as well. Uh, I think I will go over this on uh, 
write on Wednesday, write an essay proposing a solution to a problem, choose a problem faced by a community, a group to which you belong, and address your proposal to one or more members of the group or to outsiders who might help solve the problem. So it's pretty straightforward. That's the prompt. <clears throat> now, in preparation for that essay, I want you to read the introduction and the first two essays uh, for next time. I'm going to add that to the announcement um, on Canvas so that you don't miss it. Is that clear? So if you have to revise your concept essay, go ahead. Think about a problem uh, and solution essay that you want to explore and uh, make sure uh, that you post a statement of purpose. Even if you change your mind, that is okay. A statement of purpose uh, would be what problem are you going to be addressing? Uh, there is also the need for an annotated bibliography. It is not due next week, but you may want to look into possible sources for your uh, research paper. Again, you have to use five academic sources. I will discuss sources more at length next time. Any questions? Um, I wanted to reopen my um my statement of purpose concept essay because I have it missing because I didn't really my con concept essay completed, so mm. I couldn't really write that. It, it. it is okay. The, uh, the you know that has a different purpose. It was just to compel you to come up with a topic. So that's it's not important to resubmit or redo it. So I won't get a zero for it? You will get uh, 10 points. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so good night, everyone. Thank you, Professor. Good night. Good night.